Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be using Thunder Client to create a couple of API calls to the demo Nautabot server. The first API call we're going to make is going to pull all the tenants from Nautabot, and then the second API call we're going to make is going to pull all of the devices, but then we're going to add a couple of parameters so we can filter the output. So what I'm doing is I've used the remote SSH extension to log into a VM of mine, and then I went ahead and installed the Thunder Client VS Code extension on that VM. And I am running RHEL 8.5. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the Collections tab within Thunder Client, and we're going to create a new collection called Nautabot. And then we'll go ahead and create a folder. Within that collection, we're going to call it Tenants. And then within the tenants folder, we're going to create a new request and we'll just call this get tenants. So now let's go ahead and minimize Thunder Client. We can get started configuring the request. So we're just going to be retrieving information. So we'll set the method to get. And then for the URL, we'll say https demo.notabot.com forward slash API forward slash the app name within Notabot. So we're going to say tenancy and then the actual resource we want to access. So that will be tenants. And let's go ahead and configure the baseline headers. So we'll say accept, we'll say application JSON, and then we'll change the user, user agent header to be content type, and we'll also set, also set this to application JSON. And let's go ahead and execute this request. So, we did get a response back, but we're actually getting a message that says authentication credentials were not provided. Now this is because Nautabot requires the use of a, an API token. Now each API token within Nautabot is user specific. So we could actually go to the demo Nautabot server. And we'll log in and then we'll find the API token for the default user. So if we hit this drop down, I'm already logged in. Uh, but if you're not logged in, you can log in with the username demo and the password of Nautabot. And then go to your profile, hit API tokens, and then there's already a token created. So let's go ahead and copy that. And then we're gonna use that in a header. So according to the Nautabot documentation, they tell you that you have to use the authorization header and then you're going to give it a value of capital T token space and then whatever your API token is. So we can just paste the token in and now let's resend our request. And now we actually have valid JSON output. So this is good. So let's go ahead and take a look at the data within the response. So uh, before we do that, let's go ahead and open that in a JSON file. So we'll say open in code. And then looking at the root level of of the data, we have a dictionary because we have the opening curly brace, and then we have a few top level keys. So we have count, which shows us that there should be three tenants in Nautabot's database. And then we have a results key, which is equal to a list denoted by that opening bracket. And then within this list, we have dictionaries, and each dictionary should represent a tenant. So uh, if we minimize the first one, anything within these two curly braces should be the first tenant. So you can see this tenant object has an ID. And then you can even see there's a key called URL. And this URL is actually the API URL to look at the data for this, this tenant specifically. In fact, if we even open this up in a web browser, so we'll copy that, we'll open a new tab, we'll just paste that in. We actually go to the web API for Nautabot. So the same URL that we were using to make this request in Thunder Client, we can actually plug that into our web browser and look at the same data. Now this is the URL for a specific tenant, but if we look, we have some JSON data here. We have a single dictionary, and this single dictionary has all the information for that first tenant. So if you look, look at the ID field, it ends in CC629. If we go back to our main API call, you can see that the ID of this first tenant again is the same one, right? CC629. So this URL key is kind of a handy feature. We could also plug this into our request. So we'll copy that, go back to our request, and just paste that in. Send it. 
And now this data is the same thing that we see in the web browser, which is pretty cool. And you might have noticed, looking at the actual URL, this URL is the same URL we just had. The only difference is we have the object's UUID appended to the end. So this is sort of a Django convention. Now Django is a web framework written in Python. And Nautobot is based off of the code in the Django framework. So this is a convention of Django. And basically, we have different types of views. So if I were to say like the app name and then the resource in the plural sense, so in this case tenants plural, this would be what's known as a list view. Now as soon as I add the object's ID, it becomes what's known as a detail view. Okay, because we're looking at one object in particular. So again, these are sort of Django concepts, but they're also just RESTful API con concepts as well. Um, not all APIs use this format, but Django sites do, and it's very handy. All right, so now that we've pulled the tenants, I'm going to go ahead and close the JSON file, and then I'm going to save this request without the UID. So we're going to save the list view. So open Thunder Client, there's our request. Now let's go ahead and create a new folder within the Nautobot collection. And this will be where we're going to store the second API call. So we'll make a new folder, we'll call it Devices. And then instead of remaking the API call, let's just copy this one. So we'll say uh, Duplicate. We'll move it to our Devices folder. And then we'll go ahead and rename the duplicate. And we'll call this one Get Devices. So now all we really need to do is change the URL. So let's, uh, oh, if you notice um, the URL still included the UUID in the previous request, that's because we didn't hit send after we changed the request. Um, Thunder Client only saves your requests when you hit the send button. So now if we hit send, let's go ahead and delete this. Then we'll recopy the old one. So duplicate, move it to the devices folder, and then rename it get the devices. Now if we look at it, you should see the UUID is no longer in the URL. Anyway, so now let's edit this so that we can pull all of the devices. So we just backspace. The app name that contains all the device objects is called DCIM. And then the resource we want to access is just devices. And again, this is plural. So this is our list view, right? So if we go ahead, go ahead and hit send, we got some data. Let's go ahead and open that in a JSON file. And looking at the count key, we have 389 devices. Um, but similar to how GitHub used pages within their data, right? So they only, they only return 30 results at a time. Nautobot does the same thing, except theirs is 50 at a time. So while there may be 389 devices in the database, it's only going to show us the results for the first 50 devices. Now this next key is actually giving us the URL that will give us the next 50 devices. Anyway, we'll go ahead and take a look at the actual JSON data. Um, within this results key, we have a list where each dictionary is a device. And you kind of see the same concept as before. Each device has its own UUID. So if we were to take that and put that into our request and hit send, we should get the data just for that device. Okay. And also if we enter the same URL in our web browser, we'll get the same data. So you see the ID is FDEA, or it ends in FDEA rather. And if we look at our request, we have the same thing. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get rid of that UUID, hit send, so the request saves. So now that we're turning all devices, or at least the information for the first 50 of all the devices, let's add a couple of parameters. So the first parameter we're gonna add is going to filter the devices based on site. So we're going to try and return only the devices from the site called AMS01. So if we go back to Nautobot in our web browser, Let's hit organization and then sites. You can see the first site is called AMS01. We'll go ahead and look at that site. You can see we have 11 devices. So we'll hit that link. 
and these are all the devices within the AMS01 site. And you can see they all within the name of each device we have AMS01. So let's try and uh, return these devices in our API call. So under the query tab, we're going to add a site parameter called uh, site. And then we're going to set this to AMS01. And now let's go ahead and execute this. So we actually get a message back and it says site uh, select a valid choice. AMS01 is not one of the available choices. So there's a reason why this did not work. And the reason is within Django applications, there is something called a slug. Now the slug is typically just the URL friendly version of an object's name. So in this case, the object we're talking about is the AMS01 site. Right now, all caps is not technically URL friendly, right? URL should have all lowercase data. So when this object was created in Nautobot, Django should have automatically given it a slug value. And the slug is typically just going to be the lowercase version of the name. Additionally, any spaces will be converted to either dashes or underscores. Anyway, that being said, what we really need to do is specify the slug of the object that we want to use to filter these devices by. So we're just, we're just going to say AMS01 all in lowercase. And now if we hit send, now we get actual data back. So looking at the keys, we're not going to open this in a file because it's relatively simple. But what I want you to look at is the count key is now set to 11, whereas before the count was at 389. So this goes to show that we filtered our our devices appropriately. And now if we scroll down a little bit, just looking for the site key within this device. We got a lot of stuff here. Um, let's do a control F site. There's the site key. And then the ID of the site, the URL for the specific site object. And then we see the name is AMS01. You can see what that is uppercase, but if you look at the slug key, it's AMS01 all lowercase. So again, if we're going to apply parameters based on other objects within the database, we're probably going to have to use the slug value, especially if we're working with a Django website. All right, so now with that said, let's go ahead and add a second parameter so that from the devices in the AMS01 site, let's only return the Cisco devices. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to add a new parameter called manufacturer. And we're going to set this one to Cisco, again, our lowercase, because that should be the slug of the manufacturer object in Nautobot. Um, and then just kind of show you, if we go to devices and then manufacturers, you can see we have a Cisco manufacturer. Now, again, the name is has a capital C, but the slug should be all lowercase. Anyway, back to our request, if we hit send, now you can see the count key has a value of one. So we only returned one device. And then the results key is just a list of dictionaries. Um, it should only have one item in this list. So let's go ahead and open that in the JSON file just to show you. If we minimize this first dictionary object, you can see we only have one key value, or sorry, one pair of curly braces. Anyway, so that is our second API call, but let's go ahead and look at the URL itself and break down the components. So copy that and we'll open it in a notepad file. So let's look at the components. So the first part is just the base URL, which I'm just going to call this part right here. It's just HTTPS demo.notabot.com. This is just the FQDN of the server itself. And then for Django websites, typically you're going to have a URL extension of just API. And then after that, you're going to have the app name, which in our case was DCIM. And then the actual resource you want to access, or like the object you want to access within this application, so devices. And then the last part we have are the parameters. So in RESTful URLs, or RESTful API URLs, typically what you're going to do is after the main URL and all the URL extensions, you're going to put a question mark and then each parameter separated by an ampersand. So if we only if we only wanted that site parameter, we can uncheck that. This is what the URL would look like. We'd have our main URL with all the extensions 
and then we'd have the question mark and then our one parameter. But since we have an additional parameter, the first and the second are going to be separated by an ampersand sign. So anyway, I just wanted to go over the convention for RESTful API URLs. Once again, um, within Thunder Client, you can just add the parameters in the query tab, or you can just put it in the URL itself. It's up to you. Anyways, that's all I've got. So thanks for watching the video, and I hope you have a good one.